A seventy-year-old man goes into a brothel. He picks out a young, pretty woman. They go up to her room, strip down, and climb into bed. The old man performs like a teenager, and the prostitute is amazed at how energetic and agile he is. She tells him that if he can do it like that again, she'll give him one for free. He says, Yeah, I can, but I need to take a twenty-minute nap, and while I'm asleep, I need you to hold my old pecker. She agrees. He wakes up twenty minutes later and goes at it again, just as vigorously as before. The girl is amazed at the old man's stamina and repeats her freebie offer. The old man tells her that once again, he'll need a twenty-minute nap, and she'll have to hold his willy while he's asleep. She does as he asks. He wakes up twenty minutes later, and he goes at it again, with even more enthusiasm than previously. The hooker catches her breath, and needing to satisfy her curiosity, she asks the old man, "I can understand why you need the nap, but why do you need me to hold your member while you're sleeping?" The old man replies, "Oh, that's just so you don't steal my wallet." Oops. The doctor tells the ninety-year-old man that he needs a semen sample. Bring back the specimen tomorrow. The next day, the old man comes back with the jar in hand. It's as clean and empty as it was the previous day. Did you have a little trouble? Asked the doctor. A pause. Then he says, "When I got home, I tried, you know, first with the right hand, next with the left hand. Nothing. I asked my wife for some help. She tried too." With her left hand, with her right hand, and with her mouth, she even put it under her armpit. Now we have a friend down the street. She helps us with things now and again from time to time, seeing as how we're getting on in age. And she's trying with her left, with her right. Hold on, the doctor says. You asked your neighbor for help? Yeah, but none of us could get that jar open. Ops. An 80-year-old man married a 20-year-old girl. After a year, she gave birth in a hospital. The nurse congratulated the fellow. This is amazing. How do you do it at your age? He answered, "You've got to keep that old motor running." The following year, she gave birth again. The same nurse said, "You really are amazing." What's the secret? He again said, "You've got to keep the old motor running." The same thing happened the next year. The nurse said, "You must be quite a man." He responded, "You've got to keep that old motor running." The nurse then said, "Well, you had better change the oil. This one's black." Ops. <laughs> a prostitute standing outside a motel in a small town saw a 70-year-old man walking past. She hasn't had a customer for a while, so she whistles at him and says, "Hey, would you like to have some fun time with me?" The old man said, "But I won't be able to." Prostitute, come on, man, give it a try. The old man says okay. They go in. The old man whips out his willy and makes love for thirty minutes. When he's done, the prostitute, all exhausted and tired, says, "But you said you wouldn't be able to pay you," replied the old man. <laughs> One day, when Jesus was relaxing in heaven, he happened to notice a familiar-looking old man. Wondering if the old man was his father Joseph, Jesus asked him. Did you, by any chance, ever have a son? Yes, said the old man. But he wasn't my biological son. He was born by a miracle, by the intervention of a magical being from the heavens. Very interesting, said Jesus. Did this boy ever have to fight temptation? Oh yes, many times, answered the old man. But he eventually won. Unfortunately. He heroically died at one point, but he came back to life shortly afterwards. Jesus couldn't believe it. Could this actually be his father? He said. One last question: Were you a carpenter? Why, yes, replied the old man. Yes, I was. Jesus rubbed his eyes and said, "Dad." The old man rubbed his eyes and said, "Pinocchio." Ops. There was an old man who lived in a forest. As he grew older and older, he started losing his hair until one day, on his deathbed, he was completely bald. That day, he called his children to a meeting. He said, "Look at my hair. It used to be so magnificent, 
but it's completely gone now. My hair can't be saved. But look outside at the forest. It's such a lovely forest with so many trees, but sooner or later they'll all be cut down, and this forest will look as bald as my hair. What I want you to do? The man continued. Is it true that every time a tree is cut down or dies, I plant a new one in my memory? Tell your descendants to do the same. It shall be our family's duty to keep this forest strong. And so they did. Each time the forest lost a tree, the children replanted one, and so did their children and their children after them. And for centuries, the forest remained as lush and pretty as it once was, all because of one man and his receding airline. Oops. An old man is selling watermelons. His price list reads, one for three dollars, three for ten dollars. A young man stops by and asks to buy one watermelon. That'd be three dollars, says the old man. The young man then buys another one, and another one, paying three dollars for each. As the young man is walking away, he turns around, grins, and says, Hey old man, do you realize I just bought three watermelons for only nine dollars? Maybe business is not your thing. The old man smiles and mumbles to himself. People are funny. Every time they buy three watermelons instead of one, yet they keep trying to teach me how to do business. Ops. An 88-year-old man came to the hospital and said to the doctor, Doctor, my 18-year-old wife is pregnant with my child. The doctor paused and said, there was a master bear shooter in a village. He never missed a shot. But one day, he was in a hurry and took his umbrella instead of his rifle by mistake. When he encountered a bear, he still didn't realize his mistake, so he pointed the umbrella and shot the bear. The bear lay dead with a bullet in his heart. The old man said, that's stupid. The bullet must have been shot by another person. That's exactly right, said the doctor. Ops. An old man was walking on a park adjoining the cliff famous for suicide when he saw a young woman standing at the edge contemplating suicide. He approached her. She said, Don't come near me. Since you are going to die anyway, why can't you make this old man happy with a quickie? She shrieked. Over my dead body, you filthy pervert. Old man. Okay, if that's the case, I will walk down and wait for you at the bottom and then he walked away. The woman stood for another 10 minutes, came back to her car, and left. The old man who was watching her from the bushes sighed. Seven suicide attempts saved this month. Ops. John, a wealthy 60-year-old man, shows up at the country club one day with his new wife, a smoking hot 22-year-old blonde. His buddies are amazed. There is no way someone that young and attractive would agree to marry an old geezer like you. How did you pull it off? It's simple, John says. I lied to her about my age. Did you tell her you were 50? His friends ask. John shakes his head. There is no way she could believe you were 40. John shakes his head again. So how old did you tell her you were exactly? John smiles and says 85. An old Soviet communist lies on his deathbed, on the verge of death. His friends are gathered around him, all somber. The old man turns to one of them and says, Dimitri, remember in 1921 you were almost executed? Well, you should know that I ratted you out to the Chaika. I hope you forgive me. Oh, comrade, it is in the past, and all is forgiven, says Dimitri. The communist then turns to another friend. Pedia, remember being sentenced in 1937 to 25 years in the Gulag? Well, it was me who went to the NKVED. Please forgive me. No more hard feelings, my friend. You are forgiven, says Pedia. Misha, I must confess to you that I had you sent to the penal battalion in 1942. I am terribly sorry about that day. Please, my friend, we all forgive you. You may go in peace, says Misha. Thank you, comrades, for being with me throughout all these years, says the old communist with a tear streaming down his face. I don't know where I'd be if it weren't for you. I'm sorry for betraying you all, and I hope you will forgive me. His friends are visibly touched by his words. Finally, he gathers his last strength and says, And in honor of our deep friendship, I want you to fulfill my last wish. 
See that cactus plant on the windowsill? As soon as I die, I want you to take it and shove it up my back. Just as his friends were about to say something, the old communist took his last breath. So Petya goes to the window, takes the cactus plant off, and with the other two holding up the old communist's legs, shoves it up their dead friend's back. Suddenly, they hear a loud banging on the door, followed by a gruff voice shouting, Open up, it's the police. We've received information that an old Bolshevik has been tortured to death. Ops. An old man is at passport control in Paris. He is going through his bag for his passport. The woman on passport control asks him have you visited France before? Yes, replied the old man. Sarcastically she responds well surely you should know to have your passport ready. To which he answers I didn't have to show it last time. Impossible, she bellowed. The old man looks her straight in the eye and says last time, when I landed on D-Day in 1944, I couldn't find a fecking Frenchman to give it to. <laughs> on his 74th birthday, an old man received a gift certificate from his wife. The certificate paid for a visit to a medicine man living on a nearby reservation who was rumored to have a wonderful cure for erectile dysfunction. After being persuaded to go, he drove to the reservation, handed his ticket to the medicine man, and wondered what he was in for. The old man handed a potion to him and, with a grip on his shoulder, warned, this is a powerful medicine. You take only a teaspoon and then say, one, two, three, da. When you do, you will become more manly than you have ever been in your life, and you can perform as long as you want. The man was encouraged. As he walked away, he turned and asked, how do I stop the medicine from working? Your partner must say, 1-2-3-4, the medicine man responded, but when she does, the medicine will not work again until the next full moon. The man was very eager to see if it worked, so he went home, showered, shaved, took a spoonful of the medicine, and then invited his wife to join him in the bedroom. When she came in, he quickly took off his clothes and said, 1-2-3. Immediately, he was the manliest of men. His wife was excited and began throwing off her clothes as she asked, what was the one, two, three, four? And that, boys and girls, is why we should never end our sentences with a preposition, because we could end up with a dangling participle. Ops. An old man, a schoolboy, a lawyer, a doctor, and a community service worker are all on a plane with only four parachutes when the pilot of the plane has a stroke and passes away. As the plane plummets its passengers to death the five members of the aircraft argue over who deserved to have the four bags containing the parachutes. Social worker. I deserve to live because I protect vulnerable children and support families in need of assistance. The social worker grabs the nearest bag and plummets out of the aircraft. Lawyer. I deserve to live because I advocate for my clients through my sharp wit and massive knowledge. The lawyer grabs the second bag and plummets out of the aircraft. Doctor. I deserve to live because I help diagnose ill people with my specialized training. The doctor grabs the third bag and plummets out of the aircraft. This leaves only the scuba and the old man in the plane, with it descending toward the ground. The old man, go ahead boy. Take the last parachute. You have many years ahead of you while I am just an old man who is soon to die anyway. Schoolboy, that's okay, old man, we can both take a parachute. Look, there are still two left. The old man's eyes widen with surprise. The old man, wah, but how is this possible? Schoolboy, the lawyer with the sharp wit and massive knowledge took my school backpack. Ops. A 90-year-old man goes for a physical, and all of his tests come back normal. The doctor says, Larry, everything looks great. How are you doing mentally and emotionally? Are you at peace with God? Larry replies, God and I are tight. He knows I have poor eyesight, so he's fixed it, so when I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, poof, the light goes on. When I'm done, poof, the light goes off. Wow, that's incredible, the doctor says. A little later in the day, the doctor calls Larry's wife. Bonnie, he says, Larry is doing fine. But I had to call you because I'm in awe of his relationship with God. Is it true that he gets up during the night, and poof, 
the light goes on in the bathroom, and when he's done, poof, the light goes off. Oh, sweet Jesus, exclaims Bonnie. He's peeing in the refrigerator again. Ops, an interview with an old man. An 80-year-old man had an interview with the local TV channel, and they told him, old man, can you tell us about a happy memory from your youth? One time my donkey got lost and all the village went out to search for it, and when we found it, we were so happy we all fucked it. Journalist, we can't share this story on TV. Can you please give us another story? Old man, okay, no problem. One time the goat of my neighbor got lost, and all the village went out to search for it, and when we found it, we were so happy we all fucked it. Journalist, listen, old man, these stories are too shocking for us to put them on TV. Can you share a story without any animals, please? The old man scratches his head and thinks for a moment, then says, One time our neighbor Maria got lost and all the village went out to search for her, and when we found her, we were so happy we all fucked her. The journalist, visibly annoyed by the old man's stories, shouts, Old man, can you tell us a sad story from your youth? The old man sighs, and his eyes are watery, and he says, One time I got lost. Ox. An old man walks into a bar. He sees a sign that says, Cheese sandwich, $1.50. Chicken sandwich, $2.50. Hand job, $10. Checking his wallet for the cash, he walks up to the bar and beckons to a gorgeous blonde serving drinks to an eager-looking group of men. Yes? She inquires with a knowing smile. Can I help you? I was wondering, whispers the man. Are you the one who gives the hand jobs? Yes, she says seductively. I am, the man replies. Well, wash your damn hands, I want a cheese sandwich. A KGB agent goes to a library and sees an old Jewish man reading a book. What are you reading, old man, he asks. I'm learning Hebrew, comrade, replies the old Jew. The KGB agent asks, what are you learning Hebrew for? You know it takes years to get a permission to travel to Israel? You will die before you get one. I'm learning Hebrew for when I go to heaven so I can speak with Moses and Abraham, replies the old man. How do you know you're going to heaven? What if you go to hell, asks the KGB agent. I already speak Russian. An old man walks into a jewelry with a much younger gal. He told the jeweler he was looking for a special ring for his girlfriend. The jeweler looked through his stock and brought out a $5,000 ring. The man said, no, I'd like to see something more special. At that statement, the jeweler went to his special stock and brought another ring over, here's a stunning ring at only $40,000, the jeweler said. The lady's eyes sparkled and her whole body trembled with excitement. The old man seeing this said, we will take it. The jeweler asked how payment would be made and the man stated, by check that I know you need to make sure my check is good, so I will write it now and you can call the bank Monday to verify the funds. I will pick the ring up Monday afternoon. On Monday morning, the jeweler angrily phoned the old man and said, Sir, there's no money in that account. I know, said the old man, but let me tell you about my weekend. A rich old man is on his deathbed. But he does not have any heirs. But he has three good friends a teacher, a doctor, and a lawyer. He calls them by his side and tells them, I am dying. I wish to be buried with half my wealth. I will now give you five million dollars each and you should bury half of that with my casket when I die. All three agreed and soon the man died. On the day of the funeral, all three attended. Then it came time to bury the casket. The teacher said, I'm sorry. I saw all the poor children who can't afford to go to school so I built a school for them. I don't have any money left to bury. The doctor said, I'm also sorry. I saw all the poor sick people and built a hospital for them, and I don't have any money left. The lawyer said, What kind of friends are you if you can't even honor his dying wish? And then placed a check for $2.5 million on the casket. <laughs> An 80-year-old man goes in for a physical. And the doctor tells him, You're in terrific health. You're healthier than most 40-year-olds. What do you contribute your exceptional health to? And the man replies, Turkey hunting. Every morning I walk in the mountains and go turkey hunting. Well, maybe genetics has something to do with it. 
says the doctor. How old was your father before he died? Who said my father was dead? You're 80 years old and your father is still alive? The doctor says in disbelief. Yep, replied the man. He is 100 years old and went turkey hunting with me this morning. That's amazing, exclaims the doctor. But then how old was your grandpa when he passed? Who said my grandpa was dead? The doctor is shocked and asks, Your grandpa is still alive? Yep, he's 120. But he couldn't join us this morning. He had to get ready for his wedding. Puzzled, the doctor asks, Why would a 120-year-old man want to get married? And the man responses, Who said he wanted to get married? Coworker told me this one at work. Happy Friday. <laughs> an old man placed an order for one hamburger, french fries, and a drink. He unwrapped the plain hamburger and carefully cut it in half, placing one half in front of his wife. He then carefully counted out the french fries, dividing them into two piles and neatly placed one pile in front of his wife. He took a sip of the drink, his wife took a sip and then set the cup down between them. As he began to eat his few bites of hamburger, the people around them were looking over and whispering. Obviously, they were thinking, that poor old couple, all they can afford is one meal for the two of them. As the man began to eat his fries, a young man came to the table and politely offered to buy another meal for the old couple. The old man said, they were just fine, they were used to sharing everything. People closer to the table noticed the little old lady hadn't eaten a bite. She sat there watching her husband eat and occasionally taking turns sipping the drink. Again, the young man came over and begged them to let him buy another meal for them. This time the old woman said, no, thank you, we are used to sharing everything. Finally, as the old man finished and was wiping his face neatly with the napkin, the young man again came over to the little old lady who had yet to eat a single bite of food and asked, what is it you are waiting for? She answered, the teeth. A rich old man goes golfing with his friends, and he brings along a gorgeous young lady. Well guys, meet my new fiancé, he says, full of pride. And for the rest of the afternoon the friends can't take their eyes off the beauty. After the round of golf the rich man goes up to the bar to order drinks for the group. One of his friends accompanies him and quietly asks, How did you manage to hook up with such a beautiful young lady? You're 70. She must be at least 40 years younger than you. I lied about my age. And she believed you. How old did you say you were? I told her I was 90. <laughs> An 80-year-old man finds a talking frog. An 80-year-old man is out by a pond one day when a frog jumps onto a lily pad nearby. Excuse me sir, says the frog, I know I may appear to be just a frog, but I'm actually a beautiful princess. A witch has placed a curse on me to keep me in this form. The only thing that can break this curse is a kiss. Sir, if you kiss me and break this curse, I'll turn back into a beautiful princess and I'll make love to you all day and night. So what do you say? The 80-year-old man thinks for a moment then picks up the frog and puts it in his pocket and continues on his walk. Didn't you hear me, says the frog, I said if you kiss me I'll turn back into a beautiful princess and make love to you all day and night. Eh, says the man, I'm 80 years old. At this point I think I'd rather have a talking frog. <laughs> the old man's pool. An elderly man had owned his large farm in Louisiana for many years. Right at the back of the farm, there was a large pond that was ideal for swimming. The old farmer had fixed it up real nice with picnic tables, horseshoe courts and some apple and peach trees. One evening the farmer decides to go down to the pond to look it over, as he hadn't been down there for a while. Before setting off, he grabs a five-gallon bucket as he decides he'll bring back some fruit. As he nears the pond, he can hear voices shouting and laughing with glee. Clearly, someone is having a good time. As the farmer gets closer, he can see a bunch of young women who are clearly skinny dipping in his pond. He makes the women aware of his presence, and immediately they all swim over to the far end. One of the women then shouts, we're not coming out until you leave, mister. The farmer replies, Ladies, I didn't come down here to watch you swim naked or make you get out of the pond. You carry on. 
The wily old timer then holds up his bucket and says, I just came down here to feed the alligators. An old man sits down in the confessional booth at his local church and says, Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. The priest says, Tell me of your sins, my son. The old man says, Well, Father, I'm 90 years old, I've been married to my wife for 70 years, and in all that time I've always been faithful. But last night, I made love to two beautiful 19-year-old girls. We did it three times. The priest says, I see. Tell me, how long has it been since your last confession? The old man says, Oh, I've never been to confession. I'm Jewish. The priest says, So what are you telling me for? And the old man says, I'm telling everybody. <laughs> An old man applies for a job as a woodcutter. But the boss doesn't think he's fit enough. He tells the boss he is able to cut down any tree in a single swing. To prove this, he goes outside, hits a five-foot tree with his axe, and it falls over. The boss is impressed. The old man then repeats this with a ten-foot tree, then a thirty-foot tree. Finally, he takes his axe up to an eighty-foot redwood, swings, and the giant tree comes tumbling down. The boss is amazed and asks the man how he learned to do that. The man says, I practiced in the Sahara forest. Don't you mean the Sahara desert? The boss asks. Well, yes, says the old man. That's what they call it now. <laughs> An 89-year-old man goes to the urologist. Doc, he says, I need a vasectomy. A vasectomy? Why in the world would you need a vasectomy at your age? Well doc, I just married a beautiful 22-year-old woman, and last night she told me she was pregnant. I can't have more kids at my age. The doc thought for a second and said, let me tell you a story. This man went out for a walk in the woods, and he saw a huge bear. The bear started charging at him. He was a goner for sure, but at the last minute he held up his fingers, went bang, and the bear fell dead from a gunshot to the head. The old man looked at the doc incredulously impossible. Someone else must have shot that bear. The doc said, I think that's what happened in your case as well. <laughs> old man goes to church. One Sunday morning an old cow entered a church just before services. Where to begin? Although the old man and his clothes were spotlessly clean, he wore jeans, a denim shirt and boots that were very worn and ragged. In his hand he carried a worn-out old hat and an equally worn-out Bible dadar. The church he entered was in a very upscale and exclusive part of the city. It was the largest and most beautiful church the old cowboy had ever seen. The people of the congregation were all dressed with expensive clothes and accessories. As the cowboy took a seat, the others moved away from him. No one greeted, spoke to, or welcomed him. They were all appalled at his appearance and did not attempt to hide it. As the old cowboy was leaving the church, the preacher approached him and asked the cowboy to do him a favor. Before you come back in here, again, have a talk with God and ask him what he thinks would be appropriate attire for worship. The old cowboy assured the preacher he would the next Sunday, he showed back up for the services wearing the same ragged jeans, shirt, boots, and hat. Once again, he was completely shunned and ignored. The preacher approached the man and said, I thought I asked you to speak to God before you came back to our church. I did, replied the old cowboy. If you spoke to God, what did he tell you the proper attire should be? For worshiping in here? asked the preacher. Well, sir, God told me that he didn't have a clue what I should wear. He said he'd never been in this church. <laughs> An old man is on his deathbed and calls all his family and the priest. He says to his first son, I want you to have all the property in the north of the town. I have 16 houses there. He says to his second son, I want you to have all my commercial property, eight businesses. He says to his third son, I want you to have the houses in the southern district. There are only four, but they are expensive and lucrative. The old man passes away and the priest says, 
That is unbelievable. He must have been incredibly wealthy. The old man's widow laughs and says, He was a window cleaner. An 80-year-old man was having his annual checkup when the doctor asked how he was feeling. I've never been better, he boasted. I've got an 18-year-old bride who's pregnant and having my child. What do you think about that? The doctor considered this for a moment, then said, let me tell you a story. I knew a guy who was an avid hunter. He never missed a season. But one day he went out in a bit of a hurry and accidentally grabbed his umbrella instead of his gun. The doctor continued, so he was in the woods and suddenly a grizzly bear appeared in front of him. He raised up his umbrella, pointed it at the bear and squeezed the handle. And do you know what happened? The doctor queried. Dumbfounded, the old man replied, no, what? The doctor continued, the bear dropped dead in front of him. That's impossible, exclaimed the old man. Someone else must have shot the bear. That's kind of what I'm getting at, replied the doctor. <laughs> Hit the subscribe button and be a part of our hilarious jokes journey. Don't miss out on the fun join our quirky community and let's turn those frowns upside down together. Hit that notification bell to never miss a moment of our rib tickling content. Subscribe now and get ready to lol your way through each video. Subscribe to my jokes YouTube channel. Thank you and always stay.